Hi, I'm Alan McRobbie at Saley Company and welcome to program five of Scopology. Now today what, what we're going to talk about are differential probes and I've got a couple of examples here that are active differential probes. Now if you've been watching any of my other programs you know I've been harping about differential probes from time to time. So here's an example of um, how we can use one. Now, I was repairing a, a little switch mode power supply from a scope and I wanted to make sure that it was working right so I got out another one just to, as a comparison. But here's, one of the, here's a good example of what I was talking about. The AC line comes in on the board here and this whole area is relatively high voltage right up to the primary of, of this uh, switching transformer. What we're going to look at just for fun is the voltage across this switching MOSFET right here. We're going to go from the drain to the source and we're going to take a look at what the voltage is on this thing when it's actually in operation. And I just wanted to get a baseline from a known good board and then check this board out here too. So here's, here's what we're going to do is that we've, we've actually attached some electrodes here. Some, we've soldered some points on across the, the switching MOSFET as I mentioned and we've got the, the positive and negative of this uh, differential amplifier right here, a differential probe system. And this one has a bandwidth of 25 megahertz and it has a rating input of about a, a kilovolt AC. So we're in pretty good shape there as far as this unit is concerned. And it's, a, it's kind of a generic device. It has a regular BNC on it. It can be used with any oscilloscope. It's not anything particular. So you can, you can buy one of these and use it for any oscilloscope you have. And what's the reason? Well, the reason is, is because uh, if you look at the schematic of this board, there's absolutely no place on here other than these two little uh, holes that are connected together that's actually the same ground referred point as, as what the BNC shell is on the scope. Everything else is floating or has its own uh, ground reference points for its own circuit. So just attaching a regular probe from the scope to here just wouldn't work at all. It would probably damage something. So the differential probe really for this application is the only way to go. Now I realize that you know, we have probes here to sell and they're kind of expensive, but the utility that you get from them and the safety factor that you get from them makes it worthwhile. These, these probes here are in the $320 to $350 range each, but I'm using it to protect a scope here that costs more than 10 times that amount. And plus, it's good for your own safety too, so you have to weigh all these factors to see if you want to uh, actually spend the money on one. But like I've said before, if you're not really sure about what's going on, the, the safest way to approach a problem is to use some sort of a differential probe. So, what I'm going to do now is fire up this board. I'll wait for the fan to come on. There it goes. And then I've got this set on times 200. The scope is set on times 200. We're going to take a single shot. And there we go. We see what's going on. I can turn the thing off now because I don't need to keep keep it on. But you can see here that the level parts of this waveform are actually roughly 200 volts peak uh, from this point to that point. Uh, the switching frequency on this is roughly, uh, it says over here, about uh, 55 kilohertz. So the bandwidth of this unit is much more than adequate for the switching frequency of this device. And um, so this is a really good way of, of making this kind of measurement and it's very safe, doesn't affect the scope, keeps you safe as an operator. And we sell a couple of different varieties of them. This one here, as I said, was rated for a kilovolt. This one here is rated for even, even more in terms of peak to peak. It's a little bit more expensive, but uh, it, it also does a very good job. This one has the ability to, to run without an adapter. It's got its own battery compartment. And this one here requires an adapter. But if you have any questions about these things, um, you know, give me a call. I'd be glad to discuss them because we've, we've got about five or six different models of the, uh, diff of the active differential probe. So um, just an example, but uh, let me know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.